So today, I'm Amitai, I'm Amitai, this is my channel. I'm always working on mail servers, static site generators, and package managers, all open source. Give that a little centering. And today we are looking at package managers. This is something that came up in a team programming session with a client that we might want to use a Python testing library called text test. And I know it's in package source because I packaged it there. And I noticed that there is an updated version upstream since the last time I updated it in package source. And I went naively to update it and discovered that one of its dependencies is not building for me on Mac OS Monterey ARM, ARM64. Uh, so I don't know exactly what's not working, but I know that this is my Twitch channel and we can do what we want. So what I want to do today is figure it out. So on the right side of the screen, I also have a handy magic wand that might work today. I think I got it to fix. Yeah. So I can highlight with this sweet doodad. And I might do that throughout the course of the session. So on the right hand side, we have uh, the place where I discovered the problem. That's here. I'm trying to make the package source package called devel text test. And I typed make and it went into some dependencies that it needs and it did not make it all the way to the end. So I'll show you. Thankfully the M1 is nice and fast and we'll hit it pretty fast. Okay, our problem is here. At least that's one of them. So library not loaded at our path, path to this dynamic library. Presumably it's trying to build this dynamic library and other programs is trying to refer to that library and not finding it. I don't know why it's looking in user local. That doesn't look right, uh, but we can fix that. This is a category of problem that I'm familiar with from my time being a Mac package source developer, uh, it looks to me, you see this in a couple different situations. One, when there's a previous version of this library already installed. So like I'm doing a package source update from source. Uh, I usually do that with a package rolling replace like that. Uh, and that goes and works out what, what all on my system is installed for which there are newer versions which of those necessitate other things being rebuilt? What's a good order to do that in? Go. And of course, if it fails to compile anywhere along the way, then you're stuck in, a, in an intermediate state. And so it can be exciting to work that way. But for my laptop as a package source developer, that's fine. So you see it that way. If there's an old version of the library and um, for a variety of reasons, the Mac runtime linker uh, might find the installed library, even though what the build is trying to do is to link with the just built library that's not installed yet. And that could have this happen. Uh, but I think what happens here is different because user local lib is not where I have anything interesting installed. Maybe a few things that I've installed by hand. Uh, let's do it without the L. I do have some stuff in here. It's not none, but it came from installing, I guess, some double clicky packages like uh, MacFuse puts its libraries in here. Uh, I guess something that put an Erlang here did that, something that put a Tickle and a TK, SQLite. It wasn't me. Those, that's not a path the package source uses by default. It's not a, I don't use Mac ports or Homebrew. Um, I have them on my system to look at the source code sometimes, but I don't have anything installed from them. So this is all sort of double clicky installer stuff that put this here, not me. So there's no reason that there would be a previous package source version of this found. That can't be it. So the package this failed in is not devel text test. It's graphics GDK pix buff two. And so Let's keep that on the right and on the left hand side, that's where we are. So we can reproduce the error, just go and make. Yeah, and now we can work on it on the left hand side. So I'll close, I'll hide that one for now. 
And I have a guess what's going on here. My guess is from looking at the log here, you'll see LD library path is an environment variable and it's being set to a package source tree, this current working directory and the work directory and the extracted tarball output test but back up to output GDK picks buff. Yeah, so there must be built libraries that the dynamic linker, the, the build for this package wants the dynamic linker of the system to find the built libraries in the source tree in a directory called output in a directory called GDK picks buff. So it said LD library path. That is not the environment variable that influences the Mac OS dynamic linker. Let's see what is. I think it's called DILD. And yes, if we look for just plain old LD library path, we will find matches because it's a subset of the name of the variable. The name of the variable we want to set on a Mac is the same thing with a DY in front of it. Yep. So I think what must have happened is that this happens often. Somebody did the good work to update this package to a newer version, and they tried it on whatever platforms they could, and macOS was not one of them. This happens sometimes. Conversely, I often test on macOS and then discover later that I need to fix some other platform. It happens. This is reality with package source on a multi-platform system. Uh, it would be cool if we had a way to sort of submit a proposed package into an auto build system with all the platforms that we possibly support. Um, but we don't have that. So I personally run a lot of virtual machines, but even that's not exhaustive to test on different BSDs, on different Linuxes, on different Solaris derived systems. Um, stuff like this happens. That's why if you really want a stable system, you run package source from a quarterly stable branch. As a developer, I like to encounter problems as soon as they happen, as often as possible, so that the search space for what I have to find and fix is narrower. Uh, because arbitrary things can be wrong. This is a really ambitious continuous integration project to build over 20,000 pieces of random third-party software from source on whatever kind of Unix system you got. It's really ambitious. It's, it's a candidate for one of the bigger continuous integration projects that I know of. I'm not sure what bigger would look like. So this is huge, and this is inevitable. And given that, as a participant in this ecosystem, I want to meet the mistakes as soon as I can discover them. I don't want to wait till later. Uh, that means it's a hobby. But yeah, that's, it is a hobby. So that's what I want it to be like. I want to fix the problems as soon as I can find them. So that's some background. What we're looking at here is, I think, if this build would set DYLD library path, it might just work. It might. So let's back up. I'm going to make clean. And I'm going to look at the patches that we have here. So there are a few patches. These are all things that package source will apply automatically after it extracts the tarball. And this one doesn't look like it's related to our problem. This one does. In fact, that's exactly where that LD library path came from. This is a patch to the Mison build file. And that is exactly where we got the command and LD library path dot dot slash GDK pixba. So I'm going to contend that this one isn't quite right. It's not quite general enough. And likewise, the two pluses in here. Same thing. Not quite general enough. And third, thirdly, this one too. OK. So what I think we're going to do that I think will make this work on the Mac without breaking it on any more typical Unix platforms with more typical runtime loaders, uh, runtime linkers, is we're going to do, let's do this. I'm going to push D into graphics GDK pixbuff. 
when we're done here, we can pop D and come back to the thing we were really trying to do. Okay. Uh, hey, why not? GDK, Pix buff. Two? Yeah, okay. That's where it is. Uh, just to show you how that works, when we're done, pop, and we're back in text test. Okay, so push D into GDK, Pix buff two. I'm going to run make patch, which will apply these patches as they are. And I want to have a tree that consists of just that so that I can change them. So we're going to go into GDK PixBuff2, and I'm going to search recursively. I like AG. I used to use ACK. I'm sure there are other ones too. I think RipGrep is one. You can also just do grep R, um, but I, I get really frequent with this, and so AG is fast and easy to type, and the defaults are good for me. So I say AG LD library path, and let's see if there's a reasonable number of matches. Yeah. Um, it's just exactly those three. GDK picks buff, meson.build, we patch that here. Test meson.build, we patch that here. Thumbnailer meson.build, patch that here. Okay, so then all I have to do, we're going to have an ridge for each of those. Let's find all the ridges from the things that we patched. Yeah, there they are. So one at a time, I guess I could even do it without package vi because we already have the changes. The way that you normally make a new patch is you say package vi and the file, and then it makes a dot orig if it needs to, and then later you can run package diff, which I'm about to do, and it'll generate it. So let's look for ld library path. Yeah, and what I want to do is make this not literal, but like a token that we can substitute with said based on what platform we're on. So something like that is how package source would typically do that. We have some at symbols around it, and then it's extremely likely that it's the token that we meant, extremely unlikely that it's anything else. Other than that, I think this command is fine. End is fine. Uh, the particular path is fine, I'm sure. We'll find out. But I'm sure that's not different per platform. It's just the environment variable for the linker. So let's do that here. And then it says you can type package diff to see how the package diff changed. So this is what the new patch would look like. Yeah, and you can see this time it would have the at symbols in it. So let's keep it going. Uh, the other files that have that, in fact, an easier way to do this is to make an ag with a dash L that shows the files. And then I can just do a plain old VI because I know the dot ridges are already there and just hit up all of them. So I'm looking for this token, finished it in this file, looking for it again. Uh, I think I might be able to do this, Y-S-I-W at Oh yeah, that's a Vim module I have that lets me put quote marks of various kinds around things, and I just made it be an at instead of a quote. So that's pretty handy, and that means I can probably go here and type a dot. Not quite, but I can say Y-S-A-W at. Okay. And now, come back out here, say MK patches, and it didn't say there was nothing to do, so there was something to do. And if we look in our patches subdirectory now, we have some patches that changed. The first one didn't, but the other ones did. Uh, I'm going to sort of eagerly remove the ones that are originals. I can always get them back from CVS. And I'm going to update the patch checksums. And I'm going to make clean. And let's look at what we have now. This one hasn't changed. This one has, this one has, whoop, I missed one. There was a second instance. I was too quick for myself. Okay, let's finish this job. So make patch again, and I gotta be careful to find all the instances. Okay, there's one, and there were two in here. That's what I missed. Y-S-I-W at escape. Okay, now that's what I meant to do. Pop back up out, MK patches. Remove, remove, uh, remove those originals. Hey now. Help a guy out. Update the patch sum. That's short for make patch sum. This time there's nothing to do because I just did it. Uh, and now we'll make clean again. What is the status of CVS now with this unproven change? In fact, I'm sure it won't work. 
Uh, we've updated makefile, we've updated dist info, we've updated, that's all the patch sums, and we've updated these three patches. Let's look at them one more time to see if they look like what we meant. I think they will this time. Yeah, at signs, at signs twice, at signs. Okay, so now if I run make patch, if I did everything right, the patch sums will still be correct. <coughs> now those at signs are there. Next order of business, oops, is substitute those with the actual environment variable in the case that we're on Mac OS. I think the default is fine for all the other platforms. So what we want to say here is, uh, yeah, I'm not even sure this is taking effect. Um, do we have the ability to check the operating system yet? We don't. So I'm going to do that here. First, we need to include this make fragment. I think that's how we do it. Let me check a package that I know really well. Do we check an opsys in there? I thought we did. Yeah, we do in here. BSD options MK. No, I want to get the make file. Include BSD MK. That's right. Uh, yeah, so when we include that file, then we have the ability to check variables like opsys. Um, grep opsys mail qmail options MK. Oh. I wanted to read that in. Read grab opsys mail gmail options dot mk. Yeah, so that's the way to do it. Uh, I don't need to nest anything, and I will close it before I forget. Uh, so we'll say um, yeah, let's do it like this. Uh, we're going to use subst the subst framework. So subst uh, classes, we're going to add one, whoops, is diload, dynamic loader, dynamic linker. Uh, subst stage is going to be not post patch, because then it'll be hard to get those patches to be remade, uh, but pre-configure would be a good time to fix up those tokens that we introduced. And uh, subst files that we want this to apply to. Substage, excuse me, we have to name which one. Let's end tab that a little bit more now. Subst files for that class will be we'll change into there and find which ones. Uh, ag l L E library path. Those three. We'll just grab them. Paste them in. Shift J, Shift J, Shift J. That's a long line. Mm. Do it like that. And then subst said we'll do that conditionally. We'll do that with an else. So in the Darwin case, we want to replace every instance of this with dilute library path as many times on a line as we have to. And otherwise, we want to replace it with plain old that. Now, maybe that I need to somehow escape those at symbols. We'll see. Um, and we can actually make this simpler. Uh, in this case, we could say subst vars and just say that, because that's a more common case. So, now, I think we could say make 
pre-configure. And then look at those files. And if we take off the L, we'll see the matches themselves. Look at that. So we haven't proven this works. And I might have done a lot of work to no end if it doesn't. But I feel like it might. Uh, the other thing I want to check is the non-Mac OS case before I forget about it. So let's clean. Uh, I think you can do it like this to make it never do that. Now it should never match the first condition. So I'll say make patch. Make pre-configure. Whoops. That doesn't look right. What happened? Oh. It didn't substitute at all. Okay, I'm glad I tested that. Um, let's keep it simple. And I'll just do it via the same mechanism in both cases. Yeah, I think I understand what happened. There's no actual value for that variable. It just, it's empty. Okay, so if we try that again, make patch, make pre-configure. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that looks good for the non-Darwin case. So it should work the same as it did before if you're not on a Mac which is presumably pretty well. And now let's find out if we made it any better on a Mac. So I'm doing a make from clean. It's patching. It's going to configure, pre-configure and configure and everything else. It's going to try to build. We'll see if we get past that error. That looks better. Uh, so it built. Let's see if it can make a binary package. That's always another test of the emergency dynamic loader system. Looks okay. Uh, let's install it. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I also want to look at the installed libraries and verify that they're installed paths are correct, probably. But whenever you mess around with the dynamic linker via environment variables, you have to make sure that what happens in the absence of environment variables for an installed system is still correct. So I want to look at uh, lib, anything installed into lib from the plist. There they are. Uh, in particular, it was this libgdk pixbuff that we wanted to hear more from. So, uh, hey, it's, it's a question in the chat. I will be happy to respond. Uh, this is, um, today I'm doing some package source stuff. I was trying to install um, text test, which is a Python approval testing library for testing like text output of a program and making sure that it continues to match a golden master. And uh, I know that package is in package source because I put it there. I was trying to update it because I noticed there was a newer version. And then one of the dependencies failed to build. And so I'm fixing the dependency that failed to build uh, on the Mac. It must have been tested on other platforms. The Mac dynamic linker is different. And so on the left-hand side, you can see this made it work. If we're on the Mac, if we set this environment variable instead, then GDK PixBuff 2 does seem to build. I'm just validating that the uh, encoded R paths in the installed library are correct. And for that, on a Mac, we use otool, otool-l. Thank you for the question, and thanks for joining us. Uh, so if we look at this one, and we need to put the full path in front of it. If we looked at the installed one, ah, because it's going to be called dilib. That's right. OK, here are the paths. Uh, package source is libjpeg, libping, libgio, gmodule, gobject. Yeah, and this is the most important one, the first one. Uh, in a Mac 
library, the first R path is the R path to the library itself. It has its own understanding of where it's installed. Uh, isn't testing for OS 10 stuff not harder? As you need a Mac to test and compile any code. Uh, yeah, and package source is multi platform. That's absolutely right. And package source uh, originally and probably still primarily is for NetBSD. I also use that system for my servers. My laptop happens to be a Mac, um, but it, it is something that comes up all the time for package source developers that they test as well as they can, we do, on whatever platforms we have. And we have to wait and watch the bulk builds on other platforms to see if we miss something. I personally have uh, a machine with like, I don't know, 17 or 18 virtual machines on it so that I have a fast Mac x86. The one you're looking at here is a fast Mac uh, M1. So I get those platform issues. And then the x86 Mac runs VirtualBox with a bunch of machines in it, various BSDs, uh, various Linuxes, various Solaris derived systems. Um, and so for really tricky stuff, like I recently updated uh, GraphViz in package source, a whole bunch of major versions. And so before I did that, I didn't just test it on my laptop. I took that over to my enormous build machine. It's a Mac mini, which has the package source tree NFS mounted to all the different virtual machines. So I can work from one tree on all of them. And I tested on all the systems I could to make sure that it wasn't going to break too much. Because GraphViz is a big, hairy package, and it has a lot of dependence on it. And so if I broke it, I was going to break a lot of stuff. So I tried to use my own build farm, as it were, to minimize the effect of that. But what happens in practice, not everybody has their own build farm. It'd be nice if package source had like a build farm for developers to submit a package that they think might be good enough and find out which platforms it's broken on. Uh, but we don't have that. So in practice, we just have to be prepared to fix platform-specific stuff. And that's what happened here. So I think we fixed it. I think this is good. We can double check before we commit. The way we can double check is, I believe this is finished. It certainly is building and installing. Now I can pop back with pop D to the directory where I was trying to build something that I actually cared about that links with this library. I think it has a GTK3 interface. So let's pop back to trying to build text test. Fortunately, this machine is pretty fast, and so we can watch the paint dry pretty quickly. I'm, I've heard about these new M1s. I really, 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 really wish I needed one, but this M1 MacBook Air is so incredibly fine. I can't really justify it. Someday I will. Okay, so we're making our way through the dependency tree. We're still coming back for text test, which is where I'm headed. But before, I could commit now. I think what I've done to GDK PixBuff probably is correct. But we can be more sure pretty easily because of what I was trying to do anyway. So I'm just going to try to finish that first. And that'll give me a good integrated test of whether the installed library seems to work on OS X. Uh, let's look at what I did in the meantime while we're waiting for GDK PixBuff 2. And we can do it. Uh, this is all in CVS. So you have to jump through a couple hoops uh, to make it give you a nice diff. Fortunately, I have it set up to look a lot like a git diff. Just takes a moment to give it to me. Yeah, so in the make file, maybe saw a little bit of it. We include this so we can check the operating system that we're on. It gives us access to this variable. And then we make sure to substitute the files that we patched. We patched these files to add LD library path. So we're pretty sure those are the correct files to set this variable instead on a Mac. And so if it's a Mac, we set this one instead. It did help. And I did test the other path. It does still set this the way that it used to if you're not on a Mac. So it shouldn't be any worse on a non-Mac. And we updated the checksums. You can see the patches look a little bit different here. It was like that. Now it's like that. That way we have something to substitute depending on the platform. And that's it. So while we're waiting, we can provisionally write a commit message. Let me just run package lint first before. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Uh, line 27 of the make file, it suggests that I don't use a plus equal with substage. Line 27, yeah, that's right, okay. Mm -hmm. Good, and that warning, I didn't have anything to do with that. Can I fix it quickly? I do not know what that's about, but I suspect it's important. I'm going to leave it. Uh, and now we can write our provisional commit message, which is um, on Mac OS. Uh, set dialog library path instead of ld library path to fix build. Okay, uh, and once I have seen, oh nice, yeah, yeah, this work is heavily command line based. Um, at the end here, I think text test is going to have a GTK interface, that's why it's building GTK. Um, and so that's going to be our integration test. If that starts up, then presumably GDK PixBuff 2 actually works. Uh, but that's as graphical as we're going to get for this session. Uh, this is all, like, what I'm really interested in is, I, in that session earlier today that I wanted text test to be installed, I want to end this session knowing that it would succeed now and that it was the latest version. And then I can pop back up the stack to what I was doing with my team which was we wanted to write some approval tests using the text test library, and I wanted to get it from package source. I always get stuff from package source. So the end of this session will be, and that works now, the way that I expected it to. So we'll get there. Awesome having someone to watch. Thanks for coming. Appreciate your questions. Uh, so what are you used to? Not command line based. What kind of environments do you more often work in? Be curious to hear. And to be clear, I also do work in graphical environments. Earlier today, I was in uh, PyCharm, and there's IntelliJ. Um, just depends on you know who I'm consulting for, what they use. But for package source, it's a lot of this, for me at least. I'm comfortable. Visual Studio, nice. Yeah. Um, you know, actually, I'm I'm interested. Maybe you can help me understand. I used to play with package source way back in the day on Interix, which was like Windows subsystem for Unix. This would have been like 20 years ago, probably. Um, it was a really hacky thing that you could throw on top of an NT system, I think, or maybe XP was compatible too at that point, to get like a Unix POSIX interface on top of Windows. Um, and package source could sort of minimally work there. And I did also play with it on Sigwin back in the day. But what I'd really like to do, I haven't used Windows in a long time. Maybe you know something. Um, I would love to play with Windows subsystem for Linux because I suspect, given what I know about it, package source will work there exactly as well as it works on Linux, which is really well. But I would like to test there. Uh, and what I don't know how to do is how do I get Windows legitimately i want to like i want to get a copy of windows i want to run it in a virtual machine uh, x86 is fine arm is fine either way um provided that windows subsystem for linux is available for it yeah wsl exactly yeah wsl looks amazing i just don't know how to get like the windows part under it installed <laughs> so i don't know how to get there um, so if you have any like tell a guy how to get windows in this day and age i could use that We're still waiting for this build to go. Um, I do feel quite good about this library because the things that are building on top of it are not failing. But we have the opportunity to see for ourselves a graphical interface. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold on to this commit a little bit longer. On a Mac or any BSD derived system, you can do a control T to see the status. Like, what are we in the middle of in this process? And so BMake reports that we were in GTK3. It looks like we're getting to the install phase. That's awesome, because I'm ready to be done with that. Just download the Win11 ISO. That's that's too simple 
unless it's not. I'll, uh, let me get a tab open on that. Thank you. Whoopsie. There we go. Yeah, presumably I need to get a, a license key or something like that. But at least it would be running or failing to run. And then I could decide to buy it. That does sound remarkably simple. I'll keep that. Thank you. Hey, we got there. Even easier than I thought. Just don't worry about activating unless I really care. Come to think of it, I've seen that happen on other people's machines. Okay, so we got through, uh, I'll do a show installed depends, which shows what we had to do to get here. I wanted to type make and text test, and it's only just now coming back and do it. What happened before? It installed this Python library, this Python library. We had Python 3.9 already. We got GTK3. GTK3 must have been the one that needed GTK PixBuff2. So we're like 99% possible that the change is right. But like I said, we can pretty easily see. Um, so now that it built, let's just back up a second. I was in the middle of updating the text test package. That's what I was trying to do. This is all yak shaving. That's always yak shaving. What I was trying to do was bump text test from 4.0.7 and I happened to look to see if there was a newer version. There was, and I thought, this is usually trivial. Just increment the number, rebuild. That's probably the whole update. And then this build failure happened in GDK PixBuff2. So we're back to this. Let's see how close we are to being done. Make patch. And then I'm looking for some kind of a change log, so I can include that in this update message. Do we have something like that? What's in readme.txt? Looks like maybe not. Ah, in text test lib doc, you can find a change log. Okay. So in text test lib, you can find, I guess, in doc, change log. Okay, what's that look like? That looks like it ended a long time ago. Um, what else you got? Come on. Migration notes from versions 3 and 2. All right. Uh, this is where we're going to go do a little graphical stuff. Pop over here. Get me a Safari up and running. And go to the home page for text test and hopefully somewhere the changes are described. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to push pause on that for a second. We just wanted to see if it packages and installs and runs so that we could commit the GDK PixBuff thing. We can do that first, and then we can make text test committable. Okay. Do I already have it installed? No, so I can just do a make install. And then there's some binaries that are installed. Text test, I think, is the one that's linked with GDK3. GTK3. No, it's a shell script. So what is it? Is it a wrapper? Text test? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't find libpango. Trying to do a DL open. Looked in user local lib. Suspicious. User lib. Looked in the build directory. Yeah, that is quite fishy. Uh, I wonder if libpango is installed poorly. Uh, pango grip. 
lib. I wonder if, for instance, yeah, I was looking for this one. And that's where it should have looked if it was built right. Whoopsie. Needed a capital L. This thing knows where itself is installed. Who uh, who built with libpango? Who requires it? Just GTK3. Whew, I don't feel really good about this yet. I wonder... So Pango built a while ago. Okay, I think what we need to do is remove text test and come back to this again. Now we're going to push D into, I forget where Pango is, so I'll do it with a star. Hey. Why? Why is that too many? Oh, there's an updated version in WIP. Okay. Then in that case, I will go to the one in Devel. And we have a Pango installed. It's this one. We have a Pango available. It's this one. Do we have any patches about LD library path on this guy? Ooh. Okay, I have my suspicion. Let's see if this one builds. It's always something, or two, <laughs> or three. Okay, I thought maybe that wasn't going to build. But what is it saying about package config search path? Mm, that's suspicious, because what happened was at runtime something didn't find Pengo in a search path. Uh, there they are. And if I say package config libs pango, yeah, it knows to look here. What the nuts? Uh, I may have to kick the GTK3 can down the road because I don't like what I'm seeing, but I also don't understand it super well. And I was just trying to get text test, and I don't actually need the GUI myself right now on the Mac, and I'm sure it works on other platforms. I think there's more tree to bark up on the Mac with this GNOME uh, graphical toolkit stack, but I might opt out of that here. Okay, so we did determine that whatever changed about text test it didn't change which files are installed. It's still the same ones that are in the plist, all of these ones, um, and that's fine with me. The text test program won't run on a Mac right now, at least not this version, but I can just use the library for tests, and that's mainly what I'm doing. Uh, okay, so I somehow need to figure out what changed, and I think my best bet for that is to come down into, I must have a check. Do I have it cloned? Maybe not. No, okay. So th this sucks, but to see what changed, I'm gonna do a git diff. That seems to be what's required. Uh, is there anything else in here, perhaps? Or maybe maybe there are notes at SourceForge, actually. Okay, let's try that first.
Okay, 4.08 readme.txt. I guess that's what I need for a change log. Yada yada. Remember when SourceForge was cool? It was a long time ago. Okay, hey, that's what I want. I want, put that on the screen, people can see. Eh? Eh? No? Okay, I'll copy paste it. Okay, I got some stuff and I'm going to put it in here. The format I usually do for a package source update commit is like that. Should probably make a macro. I know, right? It really does. I'm surprised there aren't more pop ups. Like, yeah, it's, it's janky. I think they do have Git now. It doesn't really change how I feel about it, but I think they do have it. Uh, okay, so update to 4.08, bug fixes, and then let's format this a little better than they did, and wrap some lines. I think that's right. Updating readme file, not going to include that. License, that is good. Do I have the license reflected here? I think so. Let's double check if I have the right one. Um, I had thought it was GNU GPL 2.1. They're saying the license file is now at the root of the source. So we should be able to see that. I saw it, it was here. Yeah, okay. License would be one way and copying would be another way. Yep. 2.1 or later. So that seems right. And let's just make sure that the copying file agrees with that. <laughs> it says C license. Okay. So then I agree with this note that the license is already fine. I don't even think that's a bug fix. Our package system already reports it. That looks real. That looks real. That looks real. That looks real. Okay. I have a change log. I think we're in good shape to do our commits and call it a session. So first things first, we were going to commit the fix to GDK PixBuff2. Make sure that everything that needs to be staged for CVS is. Yeah, the commit message is not. That's because I'm not going to commit it as a file. I'm going to say commit dash F commit. And if that succeeds, I want to remove the file. And when that succeeds, I want to make a changes entry in the package source change log for the update. Oh no, there's no version bump, so I don't need that part. It's just a build fix for one platform. So other platforms, there's no change, so we don't need a change log entry. And this platform, it wasn't building, so that should do it. And now if I do an update, I should have a clean tree here. Yes, so that should be fixed in some way <laughs> on Mac. Maybe not fixed enough, I'm not really sure, but it's fixed enough to let me do the update I wanted to do, which is here. Let's see how our package lint looks for a text test. Yeah, I have a GitHub in there because this is part of my, I just have all my little uh, Git repositories for each of the packages that I maintain. And if anybody thinks that's important enough to them to fund, GitHub will show it to them. Uh, but so this one, uh, I think the changes were really minimal, but let's look at them. Version bump and dist info bump. Okay, so then this one I will say with the file and remove the message and do make a changes entry. This is a version bump. And that'll go on out to package source. So if you follow the package source changes mailing list uh, at netbsd.org, you'll see emails for each of these commits. Uh, the GDK PixBuff one, I don't maintain that package, so I don't have my own little git copy of that directory, but this one I do. And so whenever I've updated it in CVS, I also like to keep it up to date in git. Once upon a time when I was offline traveling, I like to be able to work on things. Um, so that's what I say. And then I'll do a git push. You'll see where the remote is for this one, just for this directory. 
It's still part of the CVS checkout, but I also have my own repo for this directory. So I'll push it on up to there, and then I can show you what that looks like. And that'll be our session. So, Safari, hey, do it on screen. I'm pretty new to twitching. I don't know if you can tell. I don't really know what I'm doing about that. But so GitHub, Schmanz, um, package source text test. Yeah. Uh, and so you can see, you'll see like a Git version of the thing I just committed to CVS. Same idea here. Um, and this isn't really important for anybody to be able to get their own checkout from here. It's just useful for me as a developer. Um, but I do sometimes like to look at how many repositories I have, because I do maintain a lot of packages, among other things. Yeah. And so we could search through here for, like, package source something, and that would be a lot of them. 162 of them are that. Just different packages that I put into their own little Git repos. Um, if you liked this, you might also like when I hack on IkiWiki, which is a mostly static site generator, a really old one. You can see the style. It's a really old one. I use it for my websites, like schmanz.com. Um, and uh, you might like when I hack on NotQmail, which is a community-based fork of the Qmail mail server from way back in the day. And my next session might be something to do with NotQmail. So I may do that one next time. Yeah, I know, it's a lot. They're all really small. Uh, packages are not so complicated, usually. Um, my Qmail packages are really complicated, and that's why I got into trying to make it easier to package by reviving an upstream for not Qmail. Um, yeah, package management led me down that path. It's a lot of repos. Most of them are pretty small. Uh, don't be too impressed. I'm just some guy. But I, I do enjoy package maintenance and uh, static site generation and mail servers. So that's what this channel is about. And with that, uh, I want to thank you again for coming. It was awesome to have the questions and to have someone here with me and to give me advice about how to run Windows so I can try package source on WSL. And uh, I'll be doing this again pretty soon. I'm doing it whenever I can. So thanks for joining. Maybe give me a follow and uh, see you next time.